Well, thanks so much for tuning in this conversation. We're calling it Q4 with BQ. Uh, the Beer and Wabag's numbers came a few days back. Uh, but the, the, the larger part of the conversation that I want to have with Mr. Rajesh Chopra is around how is the sentiment around uh, new order wins, uh, order execution, and more, considering the global geopolitical situation as well. Because I think that was also the key talking point around their numbers. Mr. Chopra, great having you. Thanks so much for joining in. I hope all is well. Thank you, Neeraj, and thanks for having me there on the show. Uh, the pleasure is ours. Can we, can we talk a bit about this and then I'll get into the minutiae as well. But how do you see the situation for a business like yours, considering that there's a bit of an upheaval um, in supply chains, in the way countries uh, are trading with each other as well, and maybe in payments and maybe in execution. Yeah, I think Neeraj, uh, a very relevant question given the current geopolitical scenario. But as far as Wabag is concerned, I think uh, uh, because of this war, I think we have one of our orders which is on hold, which is from Amo Gas Company, Russia. But uh, we have been tracking it very, very closely. First thing, uh, you know, India has not accepted any sanctions, so our trade with uh, Russia is ongoing. Second part, whatever we have built them in terms of engineering, we have received all our payments. Third, it's only on suspension because uh, there are media reports and we are uh, since closely tracking that order. Even the Deputy Prime Minister of Russia is trying to revive that at the earliest possible. The only hitch is that they have some technology suppliers from the uh, Western world, which now they are reworking from other geographies. So it's a 11 billion plus project, the largest petrochemical project, which Russia is uh, doing. And uh, probably, I think, uh, maybe in the next few months, we are hopeful that it will be revived again. Secondly, you would have seen that we have bagged an other order of 18 million euros from Delem for Eurocam. This is a brine treatment solution order. The reason, again, we have gone to Russia, and Russia is still a focused market apart from CAS countries for us. Is, as I said, again, repeating that we do not have any sanctions. Number two, uh, this is a main uh, Europe, uh, Korean contractor, and our order is on this Korea, and all our payments are secured because this, this will all be through LCs from Korean first-class banks. So what we are doing is we are continuing our focus in Russia and the CAS countries. The key thing is the payment security. Another thing what we found in the Russian market is that there are a lot of other ongoing projects where some of the contractors, which are our major global competitors, are from uh, the Western world. So there, you know, there's a uh, hold. And we are trying to explore those opportunities. The key thing is that we would like to see that we get only engineering and procurement, better margins, good cash flows, and above all, the payment security. Now, this is something which we are trying to rework, and we are hopeful that maybe there's an opportunity being an Indian contractor, we may be able to fetch some more orders. Plus, we are keeping our eyes open on all CAS countries. Apart from that, the other geographies, if you talk about our future plans, I think recently we won another order from Senegal, uh, which is a desalination plant of 50 million liters per day, expandable to 100 million liters. This is again funded by a multilateral JICA, so payment security is there. We have very large consortium partners, Toyota and Ifarch. But what is more critical from our viewpoint is this is opening a new geography for us. We have not been very successful in the past in the western part of Africa, which is primarily Francophone countries. So with this win and a very strong you know, uh, French construction partner, Ifaj, we are hopeful that we'll be expanding more into the western part of Africa, apart from Sub-Sahara Africa, which we have been targeting and investing our resources. The third thing from where I see good traction in terms of future order pipeline is, you know, Middle East. Because of this spike in oil prices, we find that 
again the governments in gcc countries i think they are spending more on infrastructure and also oil and gas and petrochemicals in that particular geography we are seeing a revival of new inquiries coming up there as far as india is concerned with a huge outlay by the government of india and a lot of multilateral investment also coming i think uh, we're quite hopeful that india also should be a strong market for us okay so so if uh, order inflows in quarter 4 because you are choosy and other reasons were lower than what people are anticipating your first answer leads me to believe that because of the you already had one impressive order win and you saying that it opens up western africa oil ensures that middle east opens up in a bigger way and you talking about the inflows from the cis countries also looking like being good is safe to assume that uh, concerns around order wins for you despite the fact that you are choosing uh, and we are being very selective order wins could still be strong for fy23 i think uh, we are very hopeful that we will have a strong order book uh, in the current fiscal year which you already book- do right mr chopra i mean the order book is never a problem i mean that is looking okay but right. the new order wins is a is a so i am only saying about the new order wins okay 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 uh, as far as uh, new order wins are concerned i think in this fiscal year definitely we will be booking in spite of being selected we will be booking more than what we will be executing and it's as we said in the past it's going to be a growth year for us so we definitely look forward to more growth in terms of top line but of late you would have seen that our focus has changed to engineering procurement orders so in overseas and new geographies we are not taking on the construction so we are only leveraging our core strengths which is engineering and procurement and you know providing commissioning support providing startups of the plant to all our uh, consortium partners so that will ensure a profitable growth when we talk about profitable growth what we are saying is that our bottom line what we have exhibited in the last year will grow much better than our top line growth and i think that is something which our shareholders our investors and other stakeholders are expecting from us okay so uh, the order in flow for fy23 will be larger than the execution but would it be because execution might uh, uh, say be found wanting a little bit it could be due to the fact that uh, the the the, the you know there are different pulls and pressures at play currently in the world or also because this russian order will not be contributing in the first half that is the concern that the analyst community seems to be having on the basis of the notes that are read how would you respond to this right i think neeraj whatever you have read uh, from analyst note i think it's very clear that you know first uh, half we will not get any revenue from the uh, russian order russian. unless you know we hear the good news before what we are expecting because the three months gone we still feel that uh, it's a wait and watch now i think we have a strong order book now uh, we have you know this russian order if you see it is a it's a new order i'm not talking about the existing backlog i think the existing backlog is there there are certain challenges which i'll come to you a little later now we all these engineering procurement orders if you see their turnaround time it is much lesser than a normal epc contract apart from cash flows or margins whatever we have been talking about so the turnaround time is going to be much faster i think uh, we will definitely uh, be able to offset the impact of this and continue to grow in terms of top line as i said the other pressure on uh, execution which we have witnessed in the last quarter was on the logistics right because we found that uh, still it's not as uh, at par uh, at what we were expecting post covid but we have taken certain steps that you know when we found that you know supplies were getting delayed we have you know uh, with the support of our clients even air lifted you know a lot of critical equipments to ensure that the execution phase picks up so i don't foresee going forward that as a challenge but maybe 
you know, high logistics and commodity prices will definitely impact us in terms of maybe margins. But as I said, since the focus is on EP, we are more than hopeful that our bottom line margins will be much better than the top line growth. Uh, would, 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 would contracts have a pass through or because the, the metals pricing or the input costs are very, very volatile in choppy currently? Yeah. So I think uh, definitely uh, we have escalation clauses in most of our contracts. So what we foresee is they may be, you know, 50 to 60% of that impact will be negated, but maybe we'll still have a little bit of uh, pressure on the margins because of the commodities. But as I said, we, we have exhibited that in the past. We have resorted to a lot of cost control measures. At the same time, if you see our you know, finance and bank charges, that's under control. And the focus has been on cash. So I think we'll be still growing profitably. Yeah. By the way, just wondering, you reckon that these recent changes and the recent pullback in commodity prices could actually be a bit of a boon for a company such as yours? Have you started seeing some benefits there or could it happen with a bit of a lag? Yeah, the, definitely there is some uh, relief there. But maybe if you know, it continues, probably we'll have much better margins. But yeah, definitely, as you rightly said, there is, to some extent, there's a relief. But still far from what, uh, you know, was the commodity prices when our ongoing contracts were started. Okay. Okay. So, would it be difficult, Mr. Chopra, to maintain the guided margins? Could it be a possibility that those things could uh, not turn out the way you anticipate. And you spoke about talking about some of the challenges on the horizon for uh, business at large as well. Would love to see, would love to hear you enumerate them. Okay, as I said, you know, since we anticipated all these challenges, our focus has been purely on EP, especially overseas geographies. So I think we have been more focused, not just now in the current scenario, but maybe for a year more on these EP orders. And that's what our order book reflects. So I think we'll be able to negate the impact of margins. But uh, going forward, I do not foresee much challenges because India has a huge you know, layout for the water sector. You know, Middle East is doing well. Africa, a lot of multilateral investment is coming. And apart from that, you know, what we find is that there are a lot of countries which have committed to SDG 6, that's Sustainable Development Goal 6, water and sanitation for all. So even utilities, even or there's a lot of borrowing from the multilaterals. And as you also mentioned, we are very, very selective in these geographies, if, unless, you know, payment security is there. So I don't foresee that whatever, you know, we are anticipating or we are taken as internal targets for uh, both top line and bottom line. I don't see a challenge there, and it will be definitely a growth year, both for top line and growth, bottom line. But and again, I reiterate, our top, our uh, bottom line growth will be better than the top line growth because of change in the project mix and the geographies. But but you will you will be able to do double digit growth uh, despite e even if uh, the the Russian order doesn't come into play for the rest of the year. Uh, see, we have not given any firm guidance, but all I can say is, yes, definitely we are targeting double-digit growth. Definitely in the margins, we will see that happening. Okay. Okay. Uh, just one quick word on uh, not just, I mean, I'm not talking about only the historical receivables, though you can kind of talk about that as well. But what about receivables in general? Are they showing uh, a steady picture or could there be challenges out there? I think... Uh, Apart from whatever is a legacy issue, I think oh, we have been collecting all our receivables well in time. And the reason is that if you see 90% of our order book, it is from the projects which have a sovereign uh, funding or it has uh, very strong industrial business houses. Apart from that, it's, you'll find most of the projects are funded by multilateral. So we don't foresee other than one legacy issue, which is subjudice, so I'm unable to comment on that. But other than that, I don't think, if you see even in spite of growth, our uh, receivables are well in control. And there's no increase in receivables in spite of a legacy issue. 
Hmm. Okay. Um, last couple of questions, Mr. Chopra. Uh, I know you mentioned that you are focusing on the international side. Uh, I would love to understand what within the domestic side could really turn the tidings a bit from a domestic execution and the domestic business perspective. See, as far as domestic is concerned, you know, coming back to uh, India, as I mentioned, we have a huge outlay. There is a Jal Jivan mission. So wherever technology comp component is required, wherever challenging water treatment is there, I think we'll be more than happy to participate on that. Now, today we have Amrut, which is almost around 2.7 lakh crores, which is going to talk thing about, you know, 500 Amrut cities. We have been pretty successful in the past with the Amrut projects, I think we will definitely be targeting, but uh, maybe it's all more on the urban side as far as Amrut is concerned. So we are focusing on that. Apart from that, there are projects where, you know, multilaterals like JICA, World Bank, AFW, Asian Development Bank. So there are a lot of upcoming projects which are funded by multilaterals. So that will be our focus area. And uh, we are quite confident that we'll be able to retain our market share or maybe improve it marginally in all these kind of contracts. But again, the focus will be all these projects are executed by ULBs and the states. But the funding, if it is sovereign funding uh, coming from the center or multilateral funding, so we'll be a little choosy in picking up these projects. Any, any, any near term? Uh, conversation around orders which might be in the final lap and while you're choosy, you might give a sense of what could be the nature of the order inflow in the very near term, Mr. Chopra. See, I think uh, what you're asking is, me is going to be a little price sensitive. All I can say is that we have a strong order pipeline in India too, both from the industrial as well as the municipal sector and maybe Hopefully, when we meet next, I'll be able to give you a couple of good news. We certainly hope that happens for your perspective and the perspective of the shareholders as well. One final question. Any, any, any concerns that could be on the horizon, Mr. Chopra? I think the only concerns is, you know, as I said, you know, uh, the logistics. Sure, um, you mentioned that. Especially, you know, if I'm operating in uh, uh, geography like Russia today, maybe we have a lot of uh, suppliers from countries where there are sanctions. So, but uh, uh, you know, given the current scenario, we have already reworked you know the supplies from different countries uh, which have, do not have those sanctions as far as Russia is concerned. Sure. Already mentioned you. There's a pressure on because of commodities and uh, even a little delay because of logistics. I think, uh, but that that was that was prevalent even in the last year. I think this year also. I feel maybe it would be continue there, and but as you yourself mentioned, the impact will be lesser than what it was in the last year. Well, wish you all the best. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Congratulations on the recent order win too, Mr. Chopra, and lovely talking to you as always. Thank you, Thank you so much. The pleasure was ours. Viewers, thanks for tuning in.